庆里传神祖师，了名和尚。So, all Dharma masters, Dharma educators, Dharma teachers, Dharma lecturers, Dharma assistants, and everybody here over the internet. And our special guest today is from the North American. Coalition Council Secretary General Liao's wife, Dharma Sister Judy, accountant to the Tribula Foundation, Dharma Sister Teresa and her husband Larry, and from the National Tsonggong University of Taiwan, Professor Wang. For the uh, producers for the Kini Tian Sang Shinten from City ITV Taiwan, Dr. Sister Rebecca Xu Yaqi, and Dr. Ryan Zhuang, and Dr. Lin Su Hua. And the PR director of Taiwan Lei Zhang Temple, Dr. My Brother Fermi Wang. And Dr. Huang. Good afternoon. How do you do, everybody? Ah, 大家午安，大家好。This were in Taiwanese, Mandarin. Nomo, Konnichiwa. In Japanese. Ni ho, Dai ga ho. Hom ho a. And in Cantonese. <laughs> How are you? Ni xie do fei tang de yan lai. Everything is perfect. Ah, today, ah, this has a lot of. We had bird deliverance today. Mahang. For the Malaysian Airlines. Wuxing Hangfeng. A disaster accident and the. Wuxing Airline of Taiwan. And the gas explosion of Kaohsiung and earthquake in Yunnan. So to all together, eighty-three people. Number 36 trillion 1,500 Amitabha Buddhas and Om Amitabha say, please guide them to be reborn into the pure Buddha lands and please wait Tara, deliver them to the pure Buddha lands. So today is the Homa of white Tara. And all together there were six deities of white Tara that descended today. And each one of them was very young and gorgeous. Wearing white, and also um, 
and his hand, her hands, one is holding um, the Utpala flower, and the other one is uh, forming a wish mudra. So Utpala flower is actually also lotus blossom, and some of them is but and half open and totally blossom. So they are half open, close but and totally open. It's really difficult to describe her, how beautiful she is. She is extremely gorgeous. It's rare to find someone like that on earth. And the mantra So you need to separate the guru and the ya So during the mantra recitation was like this. So Guru Ya was together, but actually it should be separate. So you should recite it separately. So the white Tara has seven eyes. Of all the Taras, the one that has seven eyes is only the white Tara. I have said it last night, at the brow point, one eye, on both palms, there would be one eye eat on each palm and one eye on each sole of the feet. All together, seven eyes. So we also call her the Buddha Mother with seven eyes. So what it means is she has the transcendental powers through the eye and she could see all the karmic sicknesses of all beings. And she has the power to cure the sicknesses and the karma of all beings. So she is considered as the longevity deity, one of the three longevity deities, which are Amitayus Tathagata, uh, Ushina Vijaya, and White Tara. So the origin of White Tara is related to Kuan Yin, Lokeswara Bodhisattva. Because in delivering sentient beings, one deity of Guan Yin Bodhisattva is not enough. So she manifested innumerable Guan Yin Bodhisattvas. Because it is difficult to deliver sentient beings. So she was very compassionate and she expressed her compassion and two tear drops fell from her eyes and one became the green Tara and the other one became the white Tara. So they were manifested from the tears of the Guan Yin Bodhisattva. So her origin was the same as Guan Yin Bodhisattva, compassionate and delivering sentient beings. And white is primarily for purification, for eradicating calamities and karma. So she is able to eliminate the black karma of beings. So every time in reciting Hai King Kuan Yin Sutra, I would recite Guan Si Yin of the Ten Directions and all Bodhisattvas 
made the vow to deliver sentient beings and let all karma be eradicated. So anyone attending the White Tara Homa today, that through this Homa ceremony, you can eradicate all the black karma, the negative karma, may all may they be eradicated and increase your good karma, eliminate the bad karma. So let all karmic sicknesses be immediately cured or gradually cured. So this deity has a very, very deep affinity connection with Grandmaster. I said it last night that White Tara appeared to my guru. And she uh, instructed Master Dukdan Dorji to find someone with the raw family name. And he did go. And then later on, the White Tara told Master Dukdan Dorji that this person with the low family name is already here at your place. And at that time, I appeared. And then he knew that Lo was in Taiwanese. So Lo Senkan in Taiwanese. In Mandarin would be Lu Seng Yen. In Japanese. So the master has a very deep affinity with the white tower that in the heavenly realms she is my spiritual companion and on the human world it's the same she is also my spiritual companion. And the marriage and the vows of White Tara primarily is to eradicate the sufferings due to karmic sicknesses and to eliminate the retributions of karma and also foolishness or the demonic obstruction. And White Tara can also eradicate epidemics. And also sicknesses due to uh, curses and spells. And can help uh, cultivators to eliminate the adverse affinities and extending and liberating the cycles of life and death. I wrote a whole book totally about White Tara, and it was called The Precious Sword of the Yogi. It talk about the precepts of Vajrayana. And the sixth syllable is Tang. So it's a circle. Like the number five, and then like a little hook that's Tibetan. A circle, number five, and then like this. Like an open circle, and then like a dot. That's Tang. And the mudra is the mudra of Tara. 
and the same with the uh, uh, golden matter the uh, earth god the, the green tara 21 tara and white tara it's the same mudra this is the tara mudra and her look she is white very beautiful very dignified and her look some of them is a very carefree no this one is on the lotus throne and one hand is a uh, is a wish fulfilling mudra and this other hand is holding a lotus blossom that's how she looks the white tara that i just saw she was completely white and she is seated in a posture that's totally at ease, not like this statue here, which is in a full lotus position. So the white Tara that I saw was a playful, very natural. Her two legs are very natural. She has that posture. So with the mudra, her body look and mantra, heart mantra, then you can practice the white tara dharma practice. There was a Lingmapa school that recommend all men to practice Guru Padmasambhava. They only have two yidams. One is Guru Padmasambhava, and the women all practice Tara. They have no other choice. Not like Tribhuda school, we have eight primary deities. They only have two deities. One for the man, they practice Guru Padmasambhava. And for the woman, they all practice Tara. Whether white Tara or green Tara. Only two kinds. That's good. Then you don't need to ask me, who is my Yida? Who is my Yida? Everyone is asking me that. So in that Buddhist sect, you don't need to ask if you're a man, then Guru Padmasambhava. And if you're a woman, that would be Tara. And according to what I know, practicing Tara, it is easy to gain spiritual response. So it is also easy to gain spiritual response with Kuan Yin, Bodhisattva, if you see a manifestation of Kuan Yin Bodhisattva. So there is a way. Some, some people say that it is easy to get spiritual response with Tara. So that's the end of the introduction for my Tara. Yesterday we talked about great perfection Dharma, about the fourth merit of uh, Adi Buddha and ten transcendent powers that's about entering into Nirvana and Nirvana has many many meanings so abiding in the realm of great self-mastery 
So all the transcendent then the prowess from the first one, relinquishing the celestial life, appearing in the human world, appearing as a youth, appearing as a monk, uh, preferring ascetic way of cultivation, like a body tree, demonstrating the great prowess of subduing all kinds of maras, emanating the blissful serenity in the attainment of ultimate realization, turning the Dharma wheel and entering the Nirvana. So Sakyamuni Buddha, all his life is like this. It turned out that Sakyamuni Buddha is one of the manifestations of the Adi Buddha. So these are called the ten manifestations of transcendental playfulness. So coming to the Saha world is a kind of transcendental playfulness. So the chief of all chiefs, topmost and most complete, it is called the infinite. The most eloquent of all eloquences is also infinite. So my guru in Taipei, there was a temple called the Zongzi Temple. It was established by Master Pu Fang, and he was one of my good that I took refuge in. And his sect was called the Zongzi sect. Zongzi meaning completeness. So the origin was from Mahajundi Buddha Mata, and her mudra is called the complete or the general mudra. So the Yidam of Master Pu Fang is Mahajundi, and his temple is called the Zongzi Temple or the complete temple. And the school was also called the Zongzi Si School. So the fifth merit, is that it's like it's the most complete of all completeness or the chiefs of all chiefs. That means there's none other than this. So that's called infinite, everything together. And the most eloquent of all eloquences, there is a goddess that's called the goddess of eloquence, which is Saraswati, or also the talented goddess. And there's a very long mantra that, is, that sounds really beautiful. So because you're the most eloquent and you know about everything, that's why that is infinite. In the company, there is the uh, general manager Wang and a uh, uh, manager, they got married and they often get together and share their experiences. So General Wang, the GM Wang said, my wife maybe is going through menopause. She's forgetful and she's holding the, a knife and still looking for the knife. And I just couldn't stand her sometimes. So we often have that experience too. We're carrying the thing and looking for that thing. 
So like you're holding a pen and you're still looking for a pen. Uh, and the director Liu said, oh, my mind is even worse. She's holding a knife and she's looking for me all around the house. So the theory of decay or eloquence is that sometimes it's this, sometimes it's that. There are many different kinds of answers to which one is the most appropriate would be called the most eloquent of all eloquent answers. Sometimes I am also forgetful a little bit. At 17. So that's why I would suggest to a people saying this morning when I got up, I made offerings. I went to the in front of Golden Mother holding a cup of water. And form this uh, Vajra Mudra and the water here. And I draw a home, six syllable, on a cup of water. And then I decide that I'm Sprinkle the water and we talk to the double double, to the water, solitary spirits, to the yaksas and hoksas, and let them be filled with the street And after sprinkling all the water, I fill the cup again with water. I should have put it on the offering table so I walk back, walk, still walk, 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 walk. And then I place it on the offering table. And I thought, how come I'm so being muddled? How could I forget and brought the cup of water to the kitchen instead? So I eat some health food. And during breakfast, I would watch TDV. It's uh, Taiwanese news. And in the morning and at night because the morning news would be the evening news of Taiwan. So while having breakfast, so when I'm taking my drink, I would take my supplements. I would uh, open my drawer and take them, and then I would continue my breakfast. And all of a sudden, I forgot. Soon we walked out, walked into the kitchen area, and I asked her, 
Did you see me taking the, my vitamins? I forgot. Did I take them or not? So, I often ask them, did you see me take the vitamins? But I walk over there and she said, mm, I didn't pay any attention. And I forgot. Should I take them again? According to the doctors, if you forget, don't take them again. Because so don't take them again if you forget. But I, I don't feel at ease. So in Chinese it's like who cares? I take them again because I want to be sure that I take the supplements. Why don't you write a card and say, I have taken them and put it on the drawer and if you have taken the vitamins, you put the card there and if you forgot, the card will be there and oh, you have taken them. <laughs> but I would think, well, maybe that was from yesterday. So I am a little bit forgetful. Maybe that's all. I wouldn't forget about other things. <laughs> I wouldn't walk out without wearing any clothes, right? <laughs> There's one thing that often happens. And Sumu too. Okay, now it's time to drive. I drive my own car and she drives her car. And she walked to her garage. And when she's inside her car, she found out that she's wearing the sandals that she wears at home. Like uh, at the restaurants, you would have a white napkin that you would place on your lap or on your... <laughs> and she forgot to take them up. <laughs> so she's wearing a white napkin leaving the restaurant. This kind of things often happens. So to the white Dakini, the white Tara, please bless us. May we have long life, healthy, and not so forgetful. So as we age, we often forget. One time, I was inside the department store and I met someone. And he said, Oh, Grandmaster Lu, how are you? And seeing him, I thought, he looks very unfamiliar and I don't remember his name. And I was speechless and I couldn't think of his name to call him. And when he saw that, he said, you don't remember me? And he said, sorry, I don't. Oh, we had dinner together three days ago. Three days ago. And you already forget. He was like of the cold, 
called okay. Madison Company, one of the PR director of that company. And we had dined together three days earlier and then I forgot about him. So White Tara, please bless me with great health, long, long life and good memory. We shouldn't be like President Reagan. That in his late years, uh, he had uh, Alzheimer. He forgot his own wife, but he remembered other people's wives. But he forgot his own wife. <laughs> so there must be something wrong with uh, Reagan's brain. That in this life, I would never forget uh, Simu, Master Lian Xiang. That would be unforgettable. She's unforgettable. A judge asked, can you describe your marriage? And Charlie said, prior to marriage, if I work late, and when I find the dining room is, uh, is lighted, then I would feel warm in my heart because his girlfriend was waiting for him. And then, after marriage, after marriage, when I get home late from work and I found that the lights in the din dining room is on, then both of my legs would be really weak. I would never forget soon. Because if I get home a little late, I would find both of my legs really weak. It's unforgettable. And she would ask, So, why are you so late today? And I said, No. I was exercising with uh, Fermi's children. I was throwing the frisbees and the kids didn't stop. So how could I stop? We have to play until the kids are tired. So we played games. So that's why I came home late. And she asked, did you go anywhere? <laughs> How dare I? <laughs> I would never forget Sibu's eyes. So, the most eloquent of all eloquences is also infinite. It really is an infinite. In our speech, if we can let others be happy, and if they can accept your speech, your words, that's also called eloquence. That in Dharma teaching, if you can let others have faith in you, that's also eloquence. That during Dharma teachings, you can let other people be happy and accept you, that's also a kind of eloquence. Only by having this kind of eloquence, you would be able to deliver sentient beings. Otherwise, you always talk about the same thing. The old ma expanding on the sutra. And they would read the sutra. 
在不可思议的世界，随手变化天气。<laughs> Master is imitating an old monk talking about a sutra. So reading from the book, and you all fall asleep. If you are not depressed, you would be falling asleep. So you need eloquence in Dharma teachings. So that other people can accept it. So it's very important to have eloquence. Even as a salesman, you need to be able to have the skill so that the customers have to buy whatever you sell. So you can let them have interest and finally be persuaded to buy. That's eloquence. If you can give Dharma teaching so that it touches your heart, then you have the feelings and you can accept it. Only then this would be called eloquence. For some people it is good to have eloquence. So that would be like sunlight. So wherever the sunlight shines on, the heart would be bright. That's a skill. It's a joke that uh, in the hall of the hospital, there are a line of people waiting for the urine test. Every one of them is holding a cup of the urine. And the nurse is calling on someone by the name Wang Sangji. This is a play of word of Chinese word. <laughs> It sounds like a raise, raise it up. So all the people raise their cup of urine. And the nurse continue to yell. And they raise it even higher. And she yelled the name again and they raise the cups even higher. And someone by that name. <laughs> Tao in Chinese means here or uh, also means four. <laughs> so all the people pour the cup of urine on their heads. That's a misunderstanding. <laughs> That's funny. It's good to laugh, then you would feel happy and not fall asleep. So the most complete. So after dinner, the dad told the son, Come on, let's go. And they take, took a walk. The son did not respond, but the little dog did. And then the son's friend asked, Why didn't you respond when your dad called on you? The son said, Oh, he was calling on his dog son. So what did your dad call you then? And then the dad replied on the from outside the window. He's the uh, it's this is like the it's like a nickname you give to the to the kids. So 
Only Chinese would understand this, but not Western. So you cut off all afflictions and accomplishing the seeds of all wisdom. It is very difficult to cut off your afflictions. But if you have attained Buddhahood and you would truly cut off all afflictions like Grandmaster because I don't remember any of the afflictions, the previous afflictions so that's why I, I don't have any afflictions, I'm not troubled or worried when I lay on bed, I would say, going to the Western Paradise, leaving behind all sufferings, Namo Amitabha, and Golden Mother, please bless me. Golden Mother, please bless me. Golden Mother, please bless me. And then I fall asleep immediately. So it's the same as if I'm dead. So Namo Amitabha, Namo Golden Mother. So, so if you're going to the Western Paradise, why would you want to bring your afflictions with you? So you cut off all your afflictions. So, so sometimes we would have conflicts, so every family would have some conflicts, so maybe between husband and wife, or conflicts with your son or your daughter. And sometimes between son and daughter, there are lots of conflicts and that's an affliction. It's the same between countries. They would have war between countries because they have conflicts. Also inside the company, if you have conflict with your boss, then uh, you would lose your job. You should get ready to be fired. You cannot have conflicts with your boss. There are only two kinds of businessmen. One is to earn money and the other kind is to earn more money. And sometimes your plan is not the same as the boss, so you have conflict or you have conflicts between colleagues. Those are afflictions. But bring, don't bring the conflicts from the company's home or from outside, otherwise your home would also be afflicted. Then you would be afflicted wherever you are. So the sixth merit is to cut off all afflictions and you have no afflictions whatsoever. So when Grandmaster get on bed, I cut off all afflictions. Everything that happens today or from the past or it's all unrelated to me. Problems of the kids are unrelated to me. Problems from the middle age, from the old age, everything is unrelated to me. I don't care. Then I cut off all afflictions. And the future also is unrelated to me. They are all unrelated to me. I don't care about the future. And I don't care about the present either. I don't care about the past either. This is called the unattainable. So this is cutting off all afflictions and accomplishing the seeds of all wisdom. 
So when dad was really sick and at the hospital, the wife and the kids surround him on his sick bed. And the dad said, all the properties uh, at the house on the Ren Ai Lu and on the Zhongxiao Street to the wife and to the children. And the nurse thought, wow, you're a really wealthy person that love your family. And the wife didn't look very good. What? What rich? <laughs> this is the route for delivering the newspaper. <laughs> Not the properties on those streets. So the poor has the problems of the poor and they could be really troublesome. And the halves also have afflictions. The afflictions of the halves is still better than the afflictions of the have-nots. For the halves to pay taxes, you have to worry about paying taxes every month because you have so many companies and so much money and you need to hire a lot of people to help you file an income re tax return. So coming to United States, the first uh, worry that we had is residency or green card. Once you obtain your residency or green card, you would have the second worry. And the second worry is paying taxes. So paying taxes are the greatest worry of all Americans. There is a very honest elderly lady, American lady, and she has a permit to open a salon. Hair salon, and she went to Master Lian Ho's house. So Mrs. Peterson, and she has the permit for to perform hairdos. So she helped the family members. So as an example, so say if it is $10 a person, she would uh, ask for an additional $2 for paying taxes. So she's very honest. So $12, 10 for herself, and 2 is for paying taxes. So she will pay taxes even to help uh, cutting hair. Master Lian Ho often said this. So anything you do in America, even just carrying a cat, you have to pay a tax. You have to pay tax. Only for gifts, you don't have to pay tax. So the donator, the person who gives, would have to pay taxes. But the receiver don't have to pay taxes. So in America, you have to pay taxes for anything, anything you do. When you cut off um, an, an evergreen tree here at the Rainbow Temple, and the forest company bought the wood, and you have to pay taxes on that income. The law. So as a U.S. citizen or resident, 
would have this worry. So everything is worry or affliction, a lot of things. So in this case, Sumu helped a lot. I never took care of the taxes. They were all done by Sumu. So she often pointed to me this whole box is for what year and what year and what year. And she asked me to remember and I forget them all right away. These are all the materials for paying taxes. You have to remember. And I immediately forget them. So all the taxes are taken care of by Sumu. So Sumu really endure lots of hardships. So we could say that she is the president of all presidents of our Lu family. So she is really going through lots of hardships. She's taking care of the education of both of our children. So she's responsible for all that. Also for cooking, the housework, all of them. I don't do anything. I only give Dharma talks. I am the most eloquent of all eloquences, and she is the chief of all chiefs. So Sumo is really great. She takes care of everything, and she's not chief of all chiefs of our home, but also of Tribuda school. All matters, big and small, you don't need to tell Grandmaster, but you need to tell Sumo. That's why now she's very skinny. There is a reason why she's so skinny. Okay, Master, it's because I age, so I lose some weight. But Sumu is because she is the chief of all chiefs. So she bears a heavy responsibility. Some people uh, recommended her to go traveling, and I agree. But she still cannot let go because during her vacation there's still lots of emails and cell phones that she has to take care of. And Fermi would know because she is the PR he is the PR director of Taiwanese Temple. So all matters go to her. So, as he asked his girlfriend, we often praise a man as cool. That's good. <laughs> but this is a play of words of Chinese and cool in Chinese sound like that. Uh, your look is really horrible that you have to be taken out to be shot. In this life I only know one thing and that is Buddha Dharma and my writings uh, related to Buddha Dharma. And Dharma teachings, practicing, they're all related to Buddha Dharma and I cannot do anything else. But I know how to cut off all afflictions because I don't do anything. That's why I don't have any worries. Ah, 
I wish your wedding would be really lasting. That means you would stay together like a life sentence. And the policeman say, I wish that your wedding path would just be filled with green lights and no red lights. And the engineer friend said, I wish that your wedding would be like uh, the iron and steel that cannot be broken. That's good. And we often say that the spiritual cultivation commitment should be strong. And the fireman said that I wish your wedding is as blazing as the fire, as passionate as the blazing fire. And the doctor friend said, I wish your wedding is as good as the heartbeat and as romantic as the movement of the heart. Like when you see your wife, your heart would be beating really fast like that, not because you're scared, but because you always find it fresh. Like your heart beats. And the teacher friends wish that your wedding is like writing a diary, that every page is a new page. And the weatherman said, I wish your wedding would be like the sky, it's infinite, clear sky. And with no worries, that would be the best wedding, the best marriage. So today, we talk about the sixth merit of great perfection, to cut off all affliction. And this is very important in great perfection. So when you cut off all afflictions, it would be like the clear sky. There's no shadows whatsoever and no afflictions whatsoever. Everything is boundless and expansive. So I wish that all of the afflictions would disappear and that would be great perfection, a clear sky. 非常感谢这本《传承上师宝贵的法语开示》。